found a cool little drawing pencil for my tablet. Hey class, Mr. G here. Today we're going to be talking about perspective. Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here. Today we're going to be going into perspective and how it can influence some of our drawing. Traditionally, when we talk about perspective and perspective drawing we're dealing solely with a drawing class we're not dealing with sculpture but i want to change that for some of us because we use drawing in several things we do we use it for our sketchbook to bring out our ideas for what we're going to sculpt what we're going to create what we're going to build having those skills in our arsenal are definitely going to make us a better uh, sculptor a potter everything in the art world that uh, uses 3d now today we're going to be going over three different styles that i was going for and i wanted to go with different perspectives on how the perspective angle works case in point the first one that we got is the hallway design i wanted to do a, a spin on the hallway design and now one of my sculpture professors back in college told me uh, gave me a, a tidbit uh, that i thought was absolutely invaluable which is how is that sculpture going to react over the course of 30 365 days so in the course of one year what is going to happen to that object how is it going to happen if you left this outside how is rain going to interact with it? how's wind going to interact with it so i got my brain thinking of all these different things that go on with a sculpture while it's in uh just out if it's it's in a sculpture garden how is it being um taken down by the elements so when i started doing this illustration started doing the perspective drawing it got me thinking too of if i'm looking at something from multiple view angles what do i want the audience to see what do i want the viewer to take away from this piece and that is something that most teachers uh i don't think cover with their students is how are we interacting with this piece from a uh, a viewer aspect not just the creator not just the person who's making the artwork what are what's the person who's viewing the artwork what are they thinking and there's a lot of level of psychology that's being brought into that now within this drawing i definitely want to have the angle of these things that you see now if we were doing this just as a drawing class i would ask you guys how would you do your does your viewpoint change as you're working throughout this illustration but if you're doing it with sculpture how is the viewpoint change for what you want the viewer to see and there is a difference there because if we're doing it just as a drawing aspect you're doing it to showcase one single scene whereas if you're doing it from a three-dimensional aspect you're thinking about three-dimensional space using this as, as a drawing skill for our 3d people i think is a much more essential quality again these are my two cents so like if you think that it's important to do this in a drawing class by all means uh or a painting class but you know i'm just saying this for my for my ceramic students now as you can see as i'm as i'm working through this and i'm work, building in the shadows building in the shit in the gradient effects that i want to showcase how the light and how things are moving through the image from one one certain point so when you see it from that certain point you can do this across all nine blocks i'm only doing it for the central block today but you can do this exact same process throughout all of them i'll probably do that i might make a video on that next week so stay tuned if you want to see that now moving into number two did the airplane visual effect if you're at the saying on the ground you look up and you see the plane fly between some buildings if you're downtown that's what it looks like what i'd like to start with is start off with a symbol that starts that's your emphasis what are we going to emphasize in our sculpture in our drawing in our illustration put that in the forefront first because that is where everything is supposed to be directed towards so you want all the viewers attention to be directed towards that one object with that said you're going to have to use that object now as our count as our weight in the image and we're going to bring out the rest of the lines the guiding lines the guiding perspective in that image to that single single centralized point as you're doing this you're going to go ahead and start building in the structure of the buildings you're the guiding lines so you can put in windows you can put in doors you can put in facades 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 around the the top s uh, top areas of the building wherever you guys want to put in those architectural details but here's the thing when you're again this comes back to the first one that we did where you're drawing that perspective of how do you want the viewer to engage with the object how do you want the viewer to engage with the piece again as we work in our sketchbooks you're trying to guide your viewer guide the artwork in a certain direction because you have a viewpoint that you want to take in this so let's talk so keep that in mind as you guys are working forward finally number three now for number three we're going to talk about the shapes that we create Ooh, focus the shapes that we create. So in your sketchbook, in your sketchbook, you guys are definitely gonna be making shapes in perspective. How are we changing that perspective in our objects? If I hold up my coffee cup and we look at it from this angle, the cylinder that is on this side to the cylinder that, on this, that is on this side could be different, uh, especially if we want more of that. If this was a wide lens, I'd have kind of some stretch, a little more stretch 
stretching the image here but uh if this was stretched out and we kind of fanned it a little bit i mean that kind of kind of stretched a little bit so where we have the front plane of our coffee cup is one shape so i mean you can see how when we got the light reflect you got these nice parallel lines of the light refract the light elements are coming off of this when you're trying to create those planes of space inside the sketchbook because again we're drawing forms three-dimensional objects inside of our sketchbook how are we creating those forms those three-dimensional elements by the things that we draw so the first thing we'll start off is bottles vases these are common things that we draw in sculpture start off with a guideline gig line for our military people because we I talk about that a lot in class um how we're lining up those circles as a prime meridian inside of the piece so you have the central access point where you have the straight line down you're putting some circles around it now the circles need to change depending on which perspective you're viewing them from in general when i'm viewing a piece of artwork or when i'm creating different stuff and i'm wanting to draw the different areas of it i want to see what shapes are going to be changed in there so let's take the this cup now for the cup you have basically a flat plane where the outside outside surface of the cup doesn't really change it's all going to be one cylindrical shape it doesn't change its perspective at all however what if we did change it if on the foot and on top of the lip we flared it out more so you have this more of a bowing out shape so if you did that you want to illustrate that you want to put these wire lines in there and you're using those wire lines to help guide where that st shape starts to taper where it starts to move apart from uh where it already is working and as we move from there into a vase section now for the vase we want to start using different colors i'm using different colors in this because i want you guys to understand how the lines and the shapes change so starting the first thing off again i'm drawing in pen mostly because that's what i draw with i just draw in pen and using the orange lines to start off my circular transitions how these things are moving around switch it into blue so i can start getting the wire work of the shape itself in there and then using green to kind of go back to the the original pin marks that i had there i wanted to have another color just so it was easier for me to follow the lines because as you start stacking those colors in it starts to change so i'm i typically work in pin because of that um once you're creating those shapes and those lines again working with the size and the dimensions that we're trying to create how are those shapes changing from the top opening mouth of the vase to the foot usually those two are going to be about the same depending on which piece that you're doing um there's a guy on instagram i love watching him uh it's tortoise uh kind of vases i think they're fascinating to, it's fascinating to watch him throw i think it, he does a very good job of filming his stuff it's good stuff good totally good stuff if he was drawing those pieces out you're gonna have a lot skewed illustration where you have these very finely carved uh neck elements where the, they're very fine very uh fluted elements down to this bulbous uh body the vase itself is like just a cannonball that has a little bit of a collar thrown up on the top of it while those things are while that works and the illustrations are totally there for that how do those things change over over the course of the shape over the course of the illustration finally then we have the bottles here now if we're doing a bottle you're gonna have the soup can effect in the middle of the, of the middle of the design then you're gonna taper that down into a cone uh but what if we had a lid off of that you're having to show how the lid is moved off to the side so we can see again another shape another dimension of how that shape is twisted and turned Again, it's all about the perspective. How are we looking at these pieces of artwork? How are we looking at how the lines change the shape? How are we looking at how these things inter interact together? Quick little drawing overview today. I hope you guys got something awesome out of today's lesson. So how other, what other ways can you integrate perspective into your artwork, especially, specifically as a 3D artist myself? So we're gonna keep playing around with this moving forward. Definitely wanna do some more sketchbook stuff, uh, but let's close out as we always do. Don't forget to take care of the homework, which is like, subscribe, share, all the various platforms, try and get a message out there to as many students as possible. Educate the masses, always a good thing. Uh, don't forget, if you ever had a question, comment, or concern, raise those hands in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my classmates. Uh, other than that, I will see you guys next class. Let's try and move this to a digital form next time. I don't know. I'm going to work on it. I'm still playing around with the whole digital aspect. I like drawing on paper. There's a tactical quality I like, uh, but it is fun to do the whole sketch while I'm doing laps in a hallway. That's always fun. Okay. I'll see you guys next class. Until then, later, guys.